had I been chosen perhaps to run as a, a reformer on the Democrat ticket, we would have seen an absolutely different and um, I think, uh, if you will, a much prettier profile of Sarah Palin and the Palin family in my administration. That really just happened. That wasn't a puppet. That was her. Governor Sarah Palin said things would have been different if she ran as a Democrat. I don't know why, but I believe her. Things would have been totally different if she ran on issues completely opposite to the ones that she ran on. It's probably true. With 11 days left in the Bush presidency, it is time for the Rachel Maddow Show's Lame Duck Watch, because somebody's got to do it. The Bush Legacy Project has been in full swing the past couple of months with exit interviews from President Bush, Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice, and Vice President Cheney, who yesterday claimed he never exceeded or stretched his authority as Vice President. There was never any question about who was in charge. It was George Bush, and um, that's the way we operated. And this whole notion that somehow I exceeded my authority or was usurping um, his authority is simply not true. It's an urban legend. It never happened. An urban legend. Whenever you hear that, what do you do? You check Snopes.com. Yeah, not an urban legend, it turns out, Mr. Cheney. Uh, these are things you can actually prove. You expanded the office of the vice presidency more than any other vice president in American history. You, in fact, tried to create a new branch of government somewhere between the executive branch and its responsibilities and Congress and its responsibilities to avoid, in the middle, being held responsible for anything. Urban legends are stories about like, people dying from mixing soda and pop rocks together, or that idea that Marilyn Manson played Paul Pfeiffer in the TV show The Wonder Years. Um, also playing the urban legend card, Iraq War idea man Richard Pearl. He tries to claim in a recent 4,000 plus word manifesto that the neoconservative push to invade Iraq never happened. He says, quote, about the many mistakes made in Iraq, one thing is certain, they had nothing to do with ideology. They did not draw inspiration from or reflect neoconservative ideas, and they were not the product of philosophical or ideological influences outside the government. Really? Now, it wasn't the neoconservatives, it was those darn liberals with another one of their let's invade a sovereign nation moments. Yeah. In reality, the neoconservative influence on the Bush administration regarding Iraq has been very, 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 very well documented. Like, for example, in books such as the one our next guest, Michael Isakoff, co-wrote. It's called Hubris, the inside story of spin, scandal, and the selling of the Iraq war. Joining us now is Newsweek's investigative correspondent and author, Michael Isakoff. Michael, nice to see you. Thanks for joining us tonight. Good to be with you, Rachel. Um, First of all, just for background here, what's a neocon? <laughs> well, it is a bit of a mushy term and it can mean different things to different people, but in the context of uh, the Bush era and the run-up to the war in Iraq, uh, it's generally described a group of people who argued rather vociferously that the assertion of U.S. military power uh, in the Middle East and elsewhere around the world uh, could help spread democratic values and uh, impose American interests uh, throughout uh, throughout the world. Uh, it's uh, the, uh, the use of military means to achieve um, diplom you know, uh, diplomatic ends that um, uh, uh, most Americans might agree with in an abstract, but the question is means and ends often. And Richard Pearl is saying that neoconservatives had nothing to do with the war in Iraq. It wasn't their idea. Had they designed that war, it would have been totally done differently, that there should be no historical connection uh, drawn between that movement and what happened in Iraq. What do you think of that? Uh, some of what Richard Pearl writes is totally bizarre. I mean, it is consistent with what he has been saying for some time, but when you look at some of what he said in the article, it, it sort of makes no sense, at least when you, look, when you know the historical record. He suggests, for instance, that he knows of no statements by any neoconservatives uh, that argued that uh, the war in Iraq would help spread democratic values, that this was never a part of the case for war in Iraq. 
back. Well, he forgets, for instance, a speech that's prominently quoted in Hubris, which was when President Bush went to speak to the American Enterprise Institute uh, in February uh, uh, 2003, uh, AEI being sort of the command control center for uh, neoconservatives. It was sort of, you know, where Richard Pearl and a lot of others uh, used as a forum to argue many of these cases. Uh, the speech was principally about how if we overthrew Iraq, uh, Saddam's regime in Iraq, it would uh, bring democratic values to uh, uh, the world. A new regime in Iraq, the president said, would serve as a dramatic and inspiring example of freedom for other na nations. So that was sort of a principal theme that the president uh, used in his speech to the neoconservatives. There's one other document I brought along which I thought you'd find particularly interesting, uh, uh, Rachel, which is uh, something that's uh, only become public in the last year or so, and it was a, a, a presentation that Doug Fife, Doug Fife being Richard Pearl's protege, uh, somebody who he was a close ally with and who he helped put in the Bush administration. He was under Secretary of Defense, uh, and it's called The Case for Action. It was a presentation that Fife made to the National Security Council in September of 2002, The Case for Action, and it argued how regime change in Iraq could transform the Middle East. It will remove the incitement to terrorism among Palestinians and will help convince Palestinians that there is no alternative to peace. That was the argument that neoconservatives were using to advance a, a war in Iraq, and I guess in that case alone we can see, you know, with some hindsight just how um, inaccurate it was? I uh, See, I, what I thought these guys would do was say, I was never a neoconservative. I never in a million yeah. years thought what they would say was, we neoconservatives never said all these things that you've documented us saying. They've, they've, chosen, the, right. um, they've chosen the tougher denial road to hoe here. Uh, Newsweek investigative correspondent and author Michael Isikoff, thank you for your time tonight and for selecting specific historical documents you think I might like. <laughs> Thanks, Anytime. <Mike. laughs>